Hi guys, Steph here. Now, what we've got for you today is two gorgeous pens from my recent pen acquisition. I've, so, I've shown you this particular model before, but what I'd like to do is just, because some people like to see the pens once I've finished them, um, what we actually do is just show you the difference between these two. Th these are actually the same model. They're both the Anotto um, fountain pens, pl uh, plunger fillers. And they're both the 3000 model. Now, if I sh show you the first one here and show you the plunger knob to the very end there, you'll see very clearly it's got the number 3000 to the bottom. Now, this particular one being a very earlier version of the same pen, if I just simply turn it round and show you the plunger knob at the end, you'll see, you'll see it's actually got the word sorry not the word the letter s to the bottom although there's no model number as such so both pens are the same pens they're actually the anotto 3000 n version both plunger fillers as you can see there and in my opinion they're both 3000 models the difference being one's a lot earlier than the other one Let's show you the, well, what we'll do first of all, let me show you the, the barrel imprint on both pens. If I can sort of line them up for you there like so. And then let's show you. There you go. So what you'll notice is the bottom one just simply reads a notto and then underneath it has patent self-filling pen Della Rue. London and then the top one there this one now has a notto the pen and also Delarue London so the earlier version just simply said a notto and then later a notto brought out the word a notto the pen now these models the Delarue launched them from 1905 so I'm dating the earlier version as early as maybe 1905-1910 and then this one being a slightly later version again maybe around 1910 maybe 1920 so in effect they're both antique pens so that's the main difference being the barrel imprint if I show you the barrels there you'll notice the earlier version to the left has got this lovely sort of chevron pattern to it whereas the later version is quite a smooth plain plain pen okay now another version or another reason of the the variance on these pens if i take off the slip cap again both pens have slip caps um on these pens of the period sometimes they had this chasing pattern but in most cases they just simply had this plain smooth slip cap to the top there so these are correct for the pen incidentally the size of these pens from the top of the cap to the bottom of the barrel around about 149 millimeters capped around the barrel there are quite a slim 10 millimeters in diameter so Although one actually tells us that it's a 3000 and the other one just simply has this letter S to the end. I'm not sure what the S means. It may indicate that this is, well, this is a slim model. I may be correct, I may be not. So again, let's show you the earlier version. You'll notice on both of these pens the... Uh, section is quite a sort of a tapered tapered section the only difference being you'll notice to the top here on this one it has the early over and under feed so you can see that there to the top it's got the bits of the the feed to the top and then underneath you've got the feed underneath as well so this is the over and under feed of that period and again this one the over and under feed i believe they stopped putting them on these pens around about 1919 i may be correct or maybe not um another indication that this is the earlier version to the very side of the nib there 
this one reads are not so then it has the letters DLR limited for Delarue limited and to the other side it has the word 14 karat gold incidentally you can't see it but these nibs to the bottom half of the nib they actually had a a step inwards if you like or a little yeah a little step which allows it to fit inside the section so the nibs were slightly different on the earlier versions now if we show you what we term as a slightly later version you'll see the section is pretty well the same the difference being is the nib now has just simply got this feed underneath the nib like so and this nib, you'll see the nib is slightly different. It's a Delarue or not so London. It's a number three nib on this pen. So again, a slightly later version of this pen. So they're both the same pen, one being earlier, maybe even as early as 19, 1905, 1910. This one slightly later, maybe 1910s, 1920s. Um, funny enough the the earlier version you'll notice is slightly blacker this one's got some very slight discoloring but you'll notice the condition on the earlier one is absolutely superb both of these pens have been fully restored fully serviced new plunger washers new cork washers to the end um, and as we said they both what we term as plunger fillers yes or no you people are singing now they're saying can we see it writing right what we'll do let's do the earlier version first of all which is the over and under feed and as we said in many films or many videos what we do we simply pull out the plunger like so dip the nib in the ink push the plunger all the way down let's bring on some tissue give it a wipe and then what we need to do now is close the plunger knob all the way home the reason being again I've repeated in other videos these pens had a shut off shut off valve inside so once you turn the knob all the way home it closes the the ink ink flow so what we need to do is just open it up slightly by giving it a small turn backwards and another problem that we have with these pens because they're quite temperamental of the system and the you know the the air inside has to sort of warm up a little bit they have a tendency to blob so let's see how this one how this one writes so this one is the Anotto as we said it's the what they term as the self self filler pen and the date of this pen from I don't know maybe 1905 1910 as we said the over and under feed I believe about 1919 they stopped putting the under and over and under feed on these pens but writing nicely writing with a well yeah a fine line but I can already feel that there's a little bit of sort of flexibility in the nib there so as you can see on the downward stroke we can actually get quite a broad line on the cross stroke very fine line so if we do the figure of eights there you can see we're getting a lovely variation in the line so let's pop the cap back on this one so there we go that's the Anotto patent self-filling pen the earlier version as you'd expect with these Anotto nibs writing with a flexi nib you can see it's given us some variation in the line so let's bring on the slightly later version and as before let's take the cap off let's pull the plunger out as far as it'll go pop it in the ink and push down on the plunger now I'm sure you could hear that there's lots of bubbling going on there as before we turn the plunger all the way back to shut off the ink valve or the ink 
uh, the ink mechanism inside there and just give it a small turn backwards to open it and let's see how this one writes now although that was a not so self-filling pen this one now being a later version this is when Anotto actually put two extra words the pen so that's indicating that it's a slightly later version we're dating it I don't know maybe 1910 1920 a very nice writer writing very smoothly this one is writing slightly more broad than the first one and as we'd expect from these pens look at that on the downward stroke we're getting a lovely broad line with a little bit of pressure we're getting a lovely variation in line so that's the later the later version so as you can see both of them have a nice variation this is a later version or not of the pen lovely writing nice and smooth as you'd expect so there there we have it let's pop that to one side so that's it we're going to leave it at that so there's two variants of the same pen both in my opinion being the Anotto's 3000 these are what we term as the N versions N being the, the the longer versions they also did an O version which was a shorter um, and both very very early and both in absolutely gorgeous condition obviously being fully serviced fully restored I hope you've enjoyed looking at these pens as much as I enjoy showing them to you people I hope you've learned something and if I've got anything wrong or you may think um, there's something you may you may want to add leave a message don't be shy but for now I'll just say bye bye now <laughs>